Right, hi kids. Um, just doing uh, what I said, which was part four of this uh, HPV vaccine. Is it the uh, mark of the beast? Question. And so I was sort of thought I'd do a little bit more delving and ask, um, you know, how does the HPV vaccine work? And uh, it all looks extremely innocent. Um, so just. Might as well just play this because the immune it. system protects us against germs that can make us unwell. It makes special blood cells and antibodies which help to do this. The first time your body meets a new germ, your body may not be very good at fighting it. That's because it takes time to make the blood cells and antibodies required to fight off the new germ. It's during this time that the germs can sometimes make you unwell. But a healthy immune system will eventually make the blood cells and antibodies that fight off the germs. Once your immune system has encountered a germ, it doesn't forget. The next time the same germ enters your body, your immune system is able to respond more quickly, destroying the germs before you become unwell. This is called immunity, and that's what the immunization is all about. HPV immunization works by making your body remember the most common kinds of HPV that can cause cervical cancer and genital warts. The HPV vaccine contains little particles that look the same as some of the particles on the outside of the real virus. Because they are only particles, not the actual virus, you can't get HPV from having the injections. They'll just trigger your immune system so you can fight the HPV virus if you need to in the future. So that all seems very innocent and, you know, a, a no-brainer. So they, they make, like, things that look like the HPV and so they can do several at once and... You know, I guess, you know, that's all very innocent and makes sense. But, you know, they would make it all look innocent and stuff. So we've got to be careful, you know, like, do we know enough about this? And I, I imagine, like, you know... It, it's very key with this HPV vaccine that the proteins they make really do look just like the real one and you know and absolutely can't sort of cause problems but you know you got you got to be careful i mean Let's just, uh, we just uh, just had a quick search on um, DNA changing proteins. So I just thought these results for what were just interesting enough to read. DNA binding proteins are proteins that have DNA binding domains, thus have specific or general affinity for single or double stranded DNA. Sequence specific DNA binding proteins generally interact with the major groove of B DNA because it exposes more functional groups that identify a base pair. Now I really didn't understand a word of that. And that's partly my point. Next one. How does DNA change? DNA typos cause variation. Any time a DNA is copied, a mistake or change can occur in the letters of the DNA, sequence or gene. These changes result in variations or differences in DNA from person to person. So, the, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you can have a mutation while you're alive. And, you know, would it be beyond science these days to make something which could trigger that and control slightly how the DNA changes, you know, with a, with a design in mind. How can a mutation in DNA affect protein synthesis? Some DNA mutations are silent and have no effect, but others affect protein, essential molecules for life that regulate whether the gene is active or not, make more or less protein, or change protein synthesis altogether. So, 
you know, you could you could put something in someone which changes something in their DNA and then that propagates itself because then that DNA is then making proteins which could do more things. So I really, really think we we ought to be careful what we trust and for me I'm just going to no longer allow someone to stab me because <laughs> although someone sticking a needle in you cause a lot of pain and the more relax the more you relax the better it is it's still going in deep and I don't like it and when I think of injections I can still feel that feeling deep inside Okay, so moving on to um, what I might suspect could be going on here. Now, we have haplogroups, which I've done videos on before. <clears throat> and if I can zoom into the key at the bottom here. You start with uh, your, your Y. DNA Adam and A B D E C F right it goes along the alphabet not like if you check out some of these links and they're going all the way up there and T is relatively young whatever U is Europe's oldest so they have I don't know what they're doing on that website so you've got to be careful but this is the this is the one I researched before, and seemed to be the most conclusive. We can just have a look around. Uh, and you see the R1B, which is the latest. But you've also got R1A, R1A in there as well. It's getting a bit funny. Now you see there's some R1B there. There's some R1B there. There's some R1B there. And also there, that blue colour. It's got the arrows going from Africa to that blue spot there. And to there. And also there. So this R1B, I've done a video on it. You know, it's, it's, it's basically the God's latest update to the G, to the DNA, <clears throat> and all the others you've got are earlier, and you've got the R one as well. Now, my point is, what if, say, people with the J or or the L, right, or the E, whatever. Say if they were the ones who were the established elites in this world. And they sort of realised that the R1Bs are always going to better them. The R1Bs are always going to, gonna, uh, you know, because they're the sort of latest version. You might want to introduce something that would hurt the R1Bs. Or maybe it's the R1As doing it, and they want to hurt the R1Bs. So, that's what I'm saying, this HPV vaccine could be designed to go after a particular, a particular type. So that's a simplified model of haplogroups, different genetics, but um, this one's the right map to look at. Now obviously it changes, we all get mixed around. I made a video saying that it would be God's plan, perhaps that R1B, something of it at least, has managed to scatter and get into every person, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So yeah, I think for the moment that will end my thing on the HPV vaccine. I think it's just probably better to be uh, safe than sorry and avoid it.
because as you saw from the video if you've got a healthy immune system it will deal with uh, viruses you know as it comes into contact with them and and once it's done it once it will remember it and do it again so you know if you're not necessarily going to be coming into contact with all these sexual transmitted diseases then you don't need the vaccination do you and there we go ciao for now